Hello everybody, this is uh, your feedback video for the cyanotype uh, historical process. Um, you know, there's lots of different processes, but uh, like, I'm trying to remember who it was. Like one of you said, because <laughs> I read through everything and looked at everything, but uh, that was earlier today. Um, who tried the salt process. I want to say it was Abby, and didn't have a lot of success with that, sadly. It is one of those things that, um, you know, all the historical processes require um, purchasing special products, usually chemicals, um, and then trial and error, I think, as we all found out. And, and I'm really happy. This is just the second time that I've had my class do this project, and, and both times... Uh, I've really enjoyed seeing what you've created. And I, I think everybody looks at the example, you know, on the product or, you know, on the website where they saw it and they think, oh, wow, that's really cool. I hope mine turns out like that. And it just, it just does take time to, to figure it all out. But I have to tell you, I used to do it with middle school and we mixed our own chemicals and everything. But, you know, we spent a long time on it. So... Here we go with Bryce. He was our he was our gold star example, and um, <laughs> it is good that we don't. I mean, developing actual film <clears throat> is a lot more involved, a lot more involved, but it's so much fun. So I highly recommend taking a um, darkroom class if you ever get a chance. Um, Professor Schmidt on campus in, in Dauphin, or Dothan, I think it's Dothan. Um, she teaches darkroom, and she's the best. She's so much fun. So, highly recommend her class. So, I'm so happy, Bryce, to hear you say that you'd like to experiment with this again, because, you know, you've got the chemicals now. You've got all the, all the stuff. And... I'm very pleased with uh, your second try, your final product there. It looks really good. And I see that you made a negative. Um, I don't think everybody saw that note about creating a negative. This one's so interesting to me because it looks like, um, like I have some really old photos. And... Um, Sometimes the surface, if it's been heated, will, like, it'll crack and peel off the film. Um, and that's, I'm trying to think of what types of film I've seen that happen to. Um, sometimes Polaroids, sometimes other types of films. It's usually really um, old um, pictures from, like, the 40s or earlier. And that's what this reminds me of. It looks exactly like that. So I think that that's interesting. And then this one looks great. I love the, you know, the texture of, um, that you get from painting on the chemicals. I think that's really cool, too. So I wrote to you, and you got, I think everybody looked at yours and loved it and wanted advice from you, so it was really good that you went first. And um, here is where you tell me what you ordered. And did you know that this is for fabric? <laughs> you actually got the type of cyanotype chemicals that's specifically made for fabric and still got the best results, so that's really interesting because I would have never um, recommended that. So, very interesting. And next person is... Well, there was the feedback videos, just in case you hadn't, Cody and Rachel, if you hadn't seen those. I did send out a message about that. And here's Astrid. Astrid. Astrid wrote us a, a short novel <laughs> of her experiences, but 
I love it. I, I read every word. And uh, I'm not sure what video you watched, but I'd be interested in seeing, you know, because that is really a kind of a big thing to leave out about wait, letting it wait for 24 hours. Um, and I don't know who would say that, you know, you might get a better result. Um, I've never had any good result from not waiting for the chemicals to be ready. And then I think I talked to you already about I would go 20 minutes and then write exactly in the sunlight, bright sunlight afternoon. And this, this little backstory that you wrote about your OCs, I think that's really cool and definitely include it in your portfolio for sure. This I'm going to get back to, I think, just individually to everyone. Your response to, to um, Unit 12. Okay, here are your experiments. And I love the way that you line them all up so we can see exactly what's what. And your transparencies. You also did create a negative. And these pictures are really good. And I want to say... So the first, first one here, sometimes you really have to look carefully. And you will find little, little areas of clarity. So here I definitely see the texture of the bark. So, you know, while you might not call that successful, it is still successful because um, it worked. What you did worked. And I think it just needed a longer exposure because it doesn't seem like the blues got very deep. So success means you got a really nice deep blue and really, um, you know, you got a real white white from your darkest shadows, so the opposite. And then this, what you did here, I think that that's interesting, placing the transparency on top of the, the cyanotype so we can see, you know, where everything belongs. But it's also, you know, it's like it's a negative. So just looking back and forth between these two, I can now I can see the, the character here and the knots in the tree. First row, second row. And there was your raw files. Good job. So I noticed not everybody included their raw files, and that, that's part of the assignment. And here, you know, even in the first try, you can see you had some success, success. Here, greater success. And then we've got the negative. So hold on, I get confused. There's a lot of different examples. Okay, so actual digital photo. First try, second try, first try, pose, second image. <laughs> That's with the transparency. Oh, okay, so these are both with the transparency. Oh no, this is just the plain transparency, I guess. Okay. All right, I got it now. And then this one, I think that that was such a cute idea, having your character hanging upside down. And even more success with this third one. Very nice. I think you had fun with this. It seems like it. And I love that you included, you know, your recipe, everything that you used. All right. 
So yeah, I would, you know, if you get a chance to try it again, even if it's after the course is over, you know, send it on over to me. I'd love to see. I do, I do end up keeping in contact with a lot of my students, and um, so by all means, share. You know, this isn't the end. You know, it feels like it, but it doesn't have to be. Okay, here we go with Sydney. <laughs> Sydney had a little bit of trouble here and there. And you were the one that saw the instructions said, you don't have to wait. Well, that's just ridiculous. But then again, um, you know, this one is a, is a success, you know, because I see the details. Even though that was the first try and you didn't wait, you know, it still kind of worked. I mean, I can see the shapes of everything. And, you know, I didn't even think of um, recommending to do, to turn your image black and white um, until I saw your, your color transparencies, your negatives. And they're so pretty. You've got to do something with those. And this picture I love. Okay, second attempt. So this one is actually this. And then this is this. And then this one's right. Do you see? You can tell. And do you see all of that, the really blackest, deepest blacks there, you know, which came to to be the opposite, your highlights. That one turned out really well. And I wonder if there just wasn't enough difference between dark and light. And that's why I said try black and white. Try increasing the contrast and um, see how that goes for you. It's like um, if you've ever seen, I don't know if this is going to make sense, if you've ever seen when a color turns to black and white, you know, some, some things make complete sense. Like a darker color is going to look darker gray. Lighter color is going to look lighter gray. Something like red or green, those are like right in the middle. And um, the lights and darks, they just don't exist here. You know, because it's kind of like um, everything is green in the forest, right? So you've got all of these medium tones in your images here, except for this one. And so I think that that has something to do with why your cyanotypes didn't turn out as well as they could have. And then I love that your daughter touch, had to touch everything. <laughs> I didn't notice any fingerprints. And I mean, wouldn't that be fun if that came out in the cyanotype? I think that would be adorable. Every time you would talk about it, you'd say, and there's Luna's fingerprints. So great stuff, great stuff, and I hope Luna feels better soon, poor baby. And I just put that in there if anyone else wanted to try turning, like who hadn't, try turning their images into uh, black and white before they make the transparency and see if that helped them as well. Okay, I still think that's a good job, considering all you're dealing with. All right, here's Rachel. This, now this made me laugh, <laughs> that you laughed at what I said. Okay, oh, it was Rachel that did salted paper. Okay, I knew I had that wrong. And rapid fixer, that's really something that's just going to make the image last longer. So for the purpose of this assignment, you, you didn't really need it. But if you come up with something that you really like, and, you know, say you want to frame it, then the rapid fixer would be, you know, essential. So this is your photo. And so, hmm. So this is a negative, but it doesn't appear to be a transparency. So, 
I mean, I guess that process is different. Maybe it's a contact print. I'll have to look that up. Or you can tell me. Okay, so this is a more difficult process. But I still see, you know, basic details um, of the trees, you know, and, and things like the horizon and, you know, the, the strongest darks and lights came through for you. And then here's another one. And there's your negative. And that one didn't turn out. Yeah, it's not sure what, what you did differently there. But um, you had success with the first one, so that's great. Okay, and bravo for trying something different than everyone else. I applaud. Nice job, Rachel. Okay, here we go with Abigail. And I wish you had tried the Van Dyke brown print. That sound seems really, that's something I've never even tried, so um, maybe in the future. You know, if you've really enjoyed this assignment, there's so many other things that you can do, and maybe you'll actually get into film photography, which is a blast. You will love it. There is nothing else like it in the world. Um, and it's had a resurgence, you know, that digital was really popular and is still very popular, but there's been a resurgence of film photographers, you know, people gone, you know, gone for the film and developed their own and, and it's just, it's one of those things that, like a hobby or, you know, an art making method that people just get obsessed with and they buy old films on eBay and <laughs> just, yeah, super fun. So, oh, you see, I hadn't heard that before, that not washing it. And I think that turned out very successfully for you. And I, I'm going to get back to you on the, on the feedback so we can do that separately and everybody will get their own individual, you know, response. It's beautiful, beautiful. And um, I loved what Antoine said, that there's no boundaries in the picture. And it does appear, you know, like this was created to be exactly like this. You know, edges and all. I think it is, I agree, I think it's lovely. You know, it's almost like, um, have you ever done a watercolor uh, painting and, and then sprinkled salt on it before it dries? You get exactly that kind of effect. And it's beautiful for like, um, you know, ocean, ocean paintings and anything that would have that kind of cloudiness, you know? But I really, I really like that. I think you were very, very successful. And so I'd like to ask you what, um, what chemicals you used, because I, I bet we'd all love to know that. I, I like the first one that I recommended, and that's really, um, I never went anywhere else after I found that. So, mm. There's something new I want to I want to know about it. So let me know, okay, Abby. Great work. And next is Antoine. Okay, I agree. It's best to create a sample. And you say barely art is what you used and increase the contrast, which is really smart. Two days. I'm wondering a few things. Okay, so two days. Are you telling me that it sat in the sun for two days? Or um, 
after you rinsed it, you let it sit for two days? Um, just curious. And then this is actually a negative. So um, I'm kind of missing some things here. I'm missing some steps. I would like to see your transparency. Um, so your transparency must have been a positive. And then this image right here, I honestly, it's very hard to see any, um, I mean, I guess I see a little bit of texture in it here that would be created by the, um, the cyanotype um, chemicals. But I don't see like any brush strokes or anything like that. So I would like to know um, the steps that you used um, before I grade this. And it just is so clean. Um, so I'm wondering about that. I mean, I imagine you could have just taken a photo of it and then cropped it. But um, yeah, let me know your steps and I, I want to see... I want to see what it looked like, you know, with the brush strokes and everything. If you could do that for me, that'd be very helpful. Thank you, Antoine. I mean, this is just like too good. And then, like I said to everyone else, I'll get back to you on your feedback. Your feedback, my feedback. <laughs> and next is Belinda. Okay, so I did not recommend the sun print kit because I've never had a lot of success with it. I mean, it seems like it'd be so cheap and easy. And it's not actually that cheap, but I've never gotten great results from it. I mean, I have done photograms with kids, um, you know, real kids, kids, um, little kids where they placed objects on top of a sun print paper and those turned out pretty good and we could do that during one class period um, but not never tried it with a negative so i mean it's beautiful blue that blue is gorgeous so but there's such a big difference so this one is with the negative, and we've lost all of that beautiful blue. So it makes me wonder if these were even if these were even rinsed. Because I I yeah, I don't really see anything in those. So if you could get back to me on that one, I'd love to hear. And then this one, I think, was your portrait, right? Hmm, that is really ghostly. All right, let me go down to the original images. Okay, so you used. Oh, wow. How many things did you get, Belinda? You're like me. You just go and buy everything. <laughs> I go over the top. Never good. It's never good. So then what is this? This was in the part of the packaging? Or was that some kind of special paper? And then this one also looks so rich and blue. And I see your brush strokes. I always like to see that. And then this one is after it's been exposed and rinsed. I think it's cool. I like it. I like all of the, the different tones and everything that you've achieved here. And you know, even if it didn't, if it wasn't applied like uniformly enough, I still, I really appreciate 
seeing the craftsmanship in there. I like that look. Oh, there were three pictures. Okay, so here's your negatives. And those are not printed as transparencies, I guess. And there's your originals. Okay, so there are no portraits here. <laughs> I was a little confused about that. Okay, so that one was the treetop. And then you've got two vertical trees. Oh. So you know, one, two, three. Okay, and then, um, like I said, we'll take care of it this later. But very nice work. Very nice work. Put a lot of effort into that. And last but not least, Donovan. Okay, so Donovan, um, <laughs> so I think that you misunderstood um, the directions. So you say the first set is negatives. Okay, so I get what the picture is about. Um, and that does appear to be a negative. Not sure why it's red. And so you didn't have to make a digital file transparent. You were to buy transparency sheets and then print your negative on a transparency sheet. So then you're laying it right over top of um, treated, you know, chemically treated paper, which is the cyanotype chemicals. Um, so honestly, I don't see any mention of cyanotype or the chemicals. And, and then you're telling me you got bored and it took all day. So I, I honestly don't even know what's, what's happened here. So I would like to hear back from you about what your process was, what uh, products you used, and yeah, I just, I don't, don't, I'm not sure what's going on here at all. I mean, you have all of these cut out papers. And then, I mean, are, is this printed on printer paper? And then you cut out the images? That one is really cool. I do like that um, negative of that image. But I believe that your negative is printed on printer paper. And then this one. That's almost like um, it's almost like a miniature effect. I I have no clue what's going on here. I mean, there's just like this little patch of clarity, and again, it seems to be all printed on that same paper. And this one, yeah, I'm just I'm just not sure. So you're going to have to tell me more about the process that you did and um, I mean if this, I, I can't tell if this is all digitally done. Um, I don't really see any brush strokes anywhere so I'm not sure even what method you used. So please, please, please get back to me so I can grade what you've done and um, like I said let me know what, what's happening here. <laughs> All right, Donovan. I hope to hear from you soon. And um, everybody, have a great night. 
and I will talk to you very soon. Bye.